Hey everyone, Rarity Dash here, time for another blind commentary. And the other day, My Little Portal 6 dropped, so I figured I'd go ahead and give that a look. Now, I was pretty critical of the fifth episode when I did my commentary for it. I felt the tone was monolithically grim, the character reactions didn't read especially true to me, and uh, Chrysalis seemed capable of getting away with far too much far too quickly. I don't think hope is lost for the series, though, as it does have a lot going for itself. The four before that one, they were all perfectly enjoyable, and the art and animation on all of them is uh, really quite good and cool in my opinion. Five was a bit of a stumble for me, but I'm certainly not going to let that affect my expectations here. Uh, what does kind of give me pause though, on the other hand, is the video length. Uh, five was uh, pretty huge, like 40 minutes long. The follow-up though? Shortest episode yet at six minutes. Uh, not sure what to make of that, especially in light of the fact that the series has always had kind of odd pacing with uh, like protracted intro scenes and then not a whole lot seeming to happen in the actual episode. The episode just sort of ending right as the momentum is building. I kind of do worry to some extent about uh, what we'll be able to accomplish here in six minutes, but uh, I guess we'll see. Anyway, let's get started. Okay. Actually, isn't anything that needs a warning. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> Best warning yet. And that was Tirak again. He gonna be showing up in this one? Guess we shall see. Main handed. Not a location we visited yet in this thing. <laughs> Obsidian Highland. Got a Rainbow Dash billboard there. And yeah, those are some interesting designs. Bunch of OCs. Of all the places oh, we've had these Dr. conversations, Rose. this is by far the strangest. Not that strange. Just different. Not really a place you'd expect to find our type in, right? <laughs> Besides... Yeah, you like seem out of place here. Kind it's, of. It's almost like what happened in Canterlot didn't affect anyone here. It affected them, all right. The changelings may have yet to move east, but these ponies want to live to their fullest. Most cults went and joined the royal army after what happened. Everyone deals with loss in their own way. So... What did you want to discuss? Those sentries. Your design? Yes, my design, but that's not what I made them for. They're life support suits. I didn't intend for them to have combat armament. Life support? So that explains the leader being able to take all those hits. So? Do you realize what you could do with that? What, militarized life support suits? Yes, that's a genius invention. And expensive. I would assume that the company is already developing some sort of cheaper alternative. You'd be correct. Miniature sentries. More compact, easy to transport. Right, mm -hmm. but what about the ponies Remember already those out being mentioned? There? What about the Royal Guard? They could use this stuff. If one of those things could make a difference in a single battle, then what could an army of them do in a whole war? It's not that simple. The suit requires intense focus to operate. Modifications have been made to the user. It's not like she willingly signed up. Oh, Rainbow. At least she didn't know that she Poor did. thing. We had to change her, physically, mentally. The process destroyed whoever she was. She's oh. no more alive than the other machines. What? Is she a corpse inside that thing? No, no. She's still alive. What I mean is that she's been stripped of all the memories of free will. Her ability to think like you and I. We can't do this to anyone else. I can't do it. We never should have in the first place. Progress requires risks. It's part of science. You said yourself that she would have died anyway. Massive internal injuries. You saved her. Only her body. Well, I can see you're not going to go for my proposition. I can't. I can respect that. 
You have great integrity, and that's what makes you so valuable. I do have something else I can give you. Our old Exo design. I heard you built a prototype of it in Canterlot. A rudimentary one, with parts I had. It's a darn shame we never got it into production before the company split up. Here's your chance. And they won't mind if this goes missing? It's basically abandoned. I'd say we owe you for all those hazardous environment suits we kept anyway. Thanks. You know the old team still wants you to come back. You always were the best at robotics. We never did quite keep up after the company split. I would, but I still have things to keep an eye on. Well, if you ever do want to come back east, the door's always open. See you next time. <laughs> okay. Uh. What now? Just staring at his identification. Level three. And then it's just over. Huh. The other guy's name was Professor Nay. <laughs> okay. That's a name. I guess if you're Doctor Who's Professor Nay. I guess it's it's <laughs> perfectly acceptable. Okay, that was something. Well, that was an interesting move on Mr. Surtis' part there. Follows up on his 40-minute action-packed epic with an episode which is nothing more than a single scene featuring an, an OC and a background pony talking in a Manhattan nightclub. Really did not see that coming. <laughs> And I can't say it was a bad scene, it was uh, slightly whimsical with its choice in setting, well, still heavy enough to follow on what came before it. There was some intrigue, and I'm kind of curious to see what comes of it. As a whole episode though, yeah, I'm not sure what to make of it. There wasn't much in the way of revelation, I mean, uh, the stuff with Rainbow Dash, I think we could already sort of assume that from uh, what was implied in previous episodes. And the fact that people would want to mass produce the technology for military purposes, that's pretty obvious too. I'm not entirely sure what the big takeaway was supposed to be here. That uh, Dr. Hose is conflicted about maybe going back to his job? They did linger on him looking at that idea a while. I really don't know. Can't say I didn't like it, like with the fifth one, since there really was nothing here to dislike, but I did still kind of miss just seeing Twilight mess around with portals and interact with her little robot friends, like in the earlier episodes. Anyway, hope you liked the commentary, let me know if you did, and see you in the next one.